Oh, I'm ready when everyone else is. I'm here. I'm back. I'm here. That was a nice rolling play. Yes, it was. Uh, sorry for the English sometimes. Just sometimes? <laughs> sorry, sir. <laughs> Still learning, man. It's not easy. Well, I, I don't believe that. It's pretty simple. For example, let's say you have a dish, right? If you have multiple, di you know, if you have multiple of those, you have dishes. Let's say you have a fish. Now, what's the plural of that? <laughs> fish. No, you're wrong. See, it's logical. It makes total sense. <laughs> yes, but in English, I believe fish, the plural of fish is fish. Fishies. Isn't, it? Isn't it? Yes, fish. Multiple fish is still fish, but multiple dishes, dishes. Yes, multiple dishes, dishes. For because reasons. Get it? Yes, these countable and uncountable things in the English is strange to me. I believe to everyone is learning English from another language. Like in Portuguese, we have plural for every word. Yeah, I took Spanish. I know a bit of that. It's it actually has logical rules that always apply. Yes. But English is better because I said <laughs> so. Uh, indeed, I believe English is easier to learn, but uh, how can I say it? It's too different from Latin language. Uh, it's another radical. But I like English. Who are we waiting on, Poppy? Didn't Poppy just bang in the corner bleeding anyway? Uh. Makes you wonder if the ratlings get mad, like like Poppy's leaving blood all over the place, and they got to clean it up after he leaves. <laughs> like that son of a bitch! Look what he did here. Speaking of which, I guess I should cast. Can I already cast on Curie Light Wounds and Poppy? It will heal 10. Uh, Is that what you want him to do? Cast Cure Light Wounds on Poppy? Yes. Okay. It will heal 10 points. Are you okay. casting that once or twice? Okay, I will cast twice. Okay. Oh, I so wish I'd let you customize where your windows open up. 
I take it there was a problem. Uh, I have fantasy grounds stretched across two monitors. And uh. by default, it opens all new crap right dead center where you split between the two monitors. <laughs> That's a pain. Yeah. Drag and drop. Okay, while well, we're waiting for uh, Poppy, uh, you guys want to check out the other rooms? Yeah, we'd best be searching them. Well, somebody move a token to whichever room you want to go in and start with that. I will use my time investigating the cloak. Uh, it is a cloak of resistance plus one. Nice. Okay, I believe the better spot to use it. Uh, I give it to Poppy. That was your wounds, so I believe that's your magical clock. It's a magical clock of resistance. It can help you against magic. It tells you every time you get hit, hit by something. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, uh, Elric in that room. Um, <clears throat> and this would look like a typical physician's office. Uh, if it wasn't for the preponderance of grotesque anatomical sketches most depicting traumas and deformity of the head and brain. Uh, the sketches are everywhere. Um, a sturdy display case stands open and completely empty. Well, that was useless. Um, but yeah, from uh, without searching the room, that's all you see. Uh, <clears throat> the other room across the hall, um, once you open the door, uh, the, the ceiling of this room has collapsed, and it's a, uh, it's crushed a table and a well-worn couch. Um, you do notice uh, Salton, you notice that there is a pale hand sticking out of the rubble. Uh, look like I'm dead, a white hand pal. Do you mean a white hand, a pal? Uh, yeah, uh, 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 there's a dead hand sticking out of the uh, okay. rubble. And it's moving? No, it well, is it's not dead, moving. it's probably not moving. <laughs> Detect magic. This one is not moving. <laughs> I still use detect magic. Uh, you are not detecting anything magic. Okay, then I call the guys and Poppy and Poppy is stronger than. Okay, I call the guys. Let me ha help me to remove these rocks. I should check who is this guy. Detect 
Don't you think? Um, after a few rounds of uh, removing the rubble, you manage to exhume this dead body, and you can tell um, it has a name tag on it. Which is? Uh, and where is this rubble again, sorry? It, it's all pretty much in that room. Okay, so it's not, okay, it's not an actual thing on the map, got it. Right. Um, <sighs> might help if I paste that. And... You see a name tag, and uh, you notice a worn, rust-colored notebook sticking out of his pocket. I take it and I read it. Okay, what you have found is his journal. And, um, you see, there's, um, <clears throat> not so much patient charge charts, but, like, lab results of where he's tried different cures for certain diseases and so forth. And... <clears throat> In the notes, um, you see I'm references. Back. You see references to um, this doctor's name and city. And you figure that it's probably a uh, family member or. <clears throat> You know, uh, it's research, and you think that, you know, it might be valuable to the right people. Okay. I bend it and put in my coat. I keep it. Okay, then. There are anything else? Uh, nothing of any value. Wait, I'm sorry. Um, uh, <clears throat> you do find a syringe that contains a, um, potion of cure moderate wounds. A syringe? A syringe. Can we throw that like a dart into somebody? Uh, I, you could stick them, but I don't see how you'd push the syringe. Magic? Mage hand? <laughs> no, that you could do. Uh, you do know that it will take a standard action to inject it. I'm just trying to find out things, man. <laughs> okay. I'm putting the parry shit. That would be kind of funny, though, the throwing okay. danger of cure light wounds. <laughs> that it would be. Okay, and that's all that you find? Okay. And then you have the door to the north of you. Uh, they already searched the other room here. Um, it was a typical doctor's office, but it had very grotesque uh, ana anatomical sketches. Fun. Can it uh, make some money? Can we make some money with this? Can you what? Uh, uh, these sketches worth something? The 
the notes? Yes. Uh, to the right people, they would be. Like, maybe the doctor's name written in the margins. Which, do we need to know what that name is? Uh, it's in the chat window. Uh, the first one is the name of the doctor that you found dead, and then the second name is the name of the other doctor and her city that was written in the margins. Okay, we're going north. Hey, Poppy, uh, are you wearing the the cloth? Uh, Poppy wasn't <laughs> here for that. <laughs> okay. And what's the cloth? Yeah, I f uh, the cloak that you rat the ratman gave him to me was a resistance cloak, so I gave to you. That was your wounds. That's your pay. Yeah. Okay. It's a nice cloak. Cloak can resist some damage. <gasps> Say thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> no need. It's not even in my inventory, though. Uh, let me see if it's still in the party sheet. Doesn't look like it. Uh. That was from... Uh, you'll need to create an entry for it, Shear. Okay. Okay, you have the door to the north, and it is unlocked. And who wants to go first? Send the gnome in first. Always. <laughs> so this the is a cloak, a a cloak of resistance like plus one. Like, pull the pin on the gnome and throw it through the door and store it behind it. Yeah. I like that idea. We're not a politically correct game. We'll Wait, allow what, gnome what was, tossing. I, I didn't catch it. What was the idea? <laughs> we should put a pin on the, on the gnome like a, like a grenade you can pull. You pull the pin, you throw the gnome, you slam the door shut, wait for the explosion. <laughs> <laughs> or at least wait for the clawing noises to stop. Okay, Poppy. So so this cloak was a cloak of resistance plus one? Yes, sir. Okay. Because I'm just pulling it off of the, pulling it out of the wondrous items section of the library. Okay, uh, this one should mess with you a little bit. As you open the door, this yellow fog starts rolling out of this cathedral-like um, room. Uh, it is an opulent two-story office. Uh, you see overstuffed furnace furnishings, uh, elegant side tables, an altar-like desk of dark marble. Uh, you see a delicate spiral staircase and a balcony of iron rising to a lofty library overhead. Um, <clears throat> and in the middle... Um, You see this 
lake of blood spread across the center of the room. And in the center of the room, you see this individual in a kneeling position. He's being possessed by a demon. <laughs> and oh, it looks normal to me. Or the, or the demon is fleeing from his body. One, or her body, one of the two. Oh my god, it's prom all over again. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> but <laughs> you, you see the mouth open and all this fog is coming from this individual. What kind of knowledge should I roll? There's not an empty bottle of Jägermeister lying around next to her, is there? Uh, <laughs> no, but you're fairly uh, confident that, let's see... Uh, the blood belongs to the woman in the room. And... Sorry, the the what? Uh, uh, there there's a pool of blood that okay. is surrounding her, and you can tell that it is her blood. Okay. Um, her back is straight. Uh, it's just like the picture. Her mouth is gaping at the ceiling. She appears to be screaming, but there's this unsteady torrent of colored mist floating out of her mouth like a fountain. That's a bit creepy. And... Woman, shut your mouth! Uh... Knowledge <laughs> planes? Would be what you have to roll to know anything. Always. And Elric, uh, you've got knowledge planes too. Very oh. good score. Um, Elric, uh, you know that this thing has <clears throat> become a, a kind of a gate between the material planes and the dreamlands. Um, you kind of feel, uh, well, you know that this is what is <clears throat> probably creating the fog around the asylum itself, and that the vapor that it is releasing is probably what is affecting everybody's dreams. You should probably shut her mouth then. We got some duct tape. Uh, where exactly is the pool of blood? Can you show us? Because I don't want to to step on it. So there's a two-story office? That is quite a bit of... Uh, it's not quite that big. <laughs> there we go. Uh, yeah, you have a set of stairs right there going up. Ah. Uh. But this thing pretty much seems oblivious to your presence. Hey, 
know if it comes down to it. I could try uh, a spell that would daze her. I mean, I don't know if one that will stop her from doing anything, which might shut down the fog temporarily or get her attention. I don't know. Did she notice? I'm saying she's oblivious to us right now. I threw my shield at her. Did it hit? There's no uh, situation that a bomb can't make better. Just saying. Oh, I'm sorry. You all, could you can you all see the token? And you're not in combat. <laughs> I mean, we can see a token on the map, but we can't. We don't. It's not in the combat tracker or anything. Ah. Uh. Uh, I need to delete the token. Drag her off the combat tracker. There we go. Uh, yes, it did hit, and yes, you did damage, and no, it did not. Um, it phaser. Yeah, it just took the damage, and that was it. For the whole yes. sequel, I'd prefer to do, not just kill her in hopes that it stopped. Let's look around first. Let's see if that is the last resort. I wasn't trying to like. I wasn't trying to kill her or do any serious damage. I just wanted to poke her, but I didn't want to get close. <laughs> uh, can can you hear us? Can you hear us? I keep asking her. Uh, there's. As she's still just like the picture, got her mouth open like she's screaming, and this mist is coming out of her. Okay, I ha I have a really, really, really stupid idea. So... I, prior to receiving this cloak, I was wearing a scarf, which I am presumably not wearing anymore because I'm now wearing a cloak. Can I take my scarf, ball it up, and try and, like, shove it into her mouth to see if I can stop the mist? Brilliant. Uh, yeah, you can try. And I need you to make a will save. <laughs> when did he need to make uh, a will what save? Is, wait, what is, what is this against? Uh, what's your bonuses against? Uh, it's not Illu fear. Illusion and fear. Neither. Okay. Oh, not bad. Okay. And you walk over to it, and you have this bound up scarf. And you're sticking it in her mouth, I'm assuming. Yep. He said sticking it in her mouth. <laughs> Or more like prom, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> Proper year. The Jägermeister, the... Ugh. Um... Poppy, you should have plus one for the Cloak of Resistance. Uh, it, it offers no... resistance to you shoving this gag in its mouth. Um... However, that gag is not airtight, and you start seeing the mist come out of her nose, and anywhere there's a gap that air can escape from that gag, uh, you have slightly slowed it down. Okay. Well, I'm out of ideas. Anyone else? Or how about we keep looking around and come back? What about lab coats? Wrap a bunch of those over her head. We got eight of them. Uh, 
uh, you can do that. I'm going to go with Eric and look around. All right, well, they're looking around. I'm going to start wrapping lab coats around her head until it's uh, all blocked off. You realize it's like to, to do that, you'd have to suffocate her, which would kill her. <laughs> if you make it airtight, then she can't breathe. Yeah, that that's why I was I was a little concerned about that with <laughs> with the with the uh, shoving the scarf into her mouth. I was gonna I, w I was gonna pull it out if it seemed like she was starting to choke. All right, so you don't you guys value this thing's life. We don't know anything about her. Exactly. Why you can't right. just kill her on I'm, for no perceptible so reason? We, I'm neutral, good. So I better not do that. So we've ganked her with the shield, stuffed something in her mouth, now we're wrapping lab coats around her head. I just want to you guys are so I think, we, I think we've abandoned the lab coats idea. Oh, okay. I was going to say, we look like a bunch of monkeys on a football. Like I said, if it comes down to we can't find a better idea than killing her and hope the fog stops, fine, but let's look and see if there's other alternatives first. Like, can we look in these desks and see what this room is for? There's a little bookcase. Is there anything of interest there? Uh, what about this... This altar desk thing that she's in front of. Uh, you do. Number one, you spot, uh, she's got a name tag. Like a doctor? <clears throat> <clears throat> um, like, uh, support staff. Um, it, it actually says administrator on her name tag. So you kind of figure that she's the one that ran the asylum. Okay. What about over here? Okay. Uh... Are y'all going to search the room? Because it, uh, it, it is a doctor's office. And just from seeing blank letterhead and so forth, uh, you believe that chances are this is her office. I'd like to search it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, search the room. Everybody uh, search. There's a lot of furnishings, or there's a lot of books that you would expect. Uh, nothing really remarkable. Um, however, you all do start noticing around the room that there are these six small but very powerful images sketched with coal upon torn parchment, and they're set in these really fine frames. Uh, each one of them depict an eerie vista of an endless empty city under a sky of whirling mist. Uh, in, in the corner of each, uh, you see a delicate copper plate recording a year from 1408. I'm sorry, 14... 14 Each copper plate records a year from 4708 to 4715, and the name Alverzandalus is the name on the plaque. Um, My name rings a bell. As you're looking at them, they feel strangely familiar, and... <clears throat> Almost like um, that was where you were at when the Tatterman killed you in your dreams. The cold drawings? Yes, the cold drawings. Um, the, the city, uh, the streets and so forth, they just, they just bring you in mind. They're... Very, very similar to what you experienced in your dream. And 
as you search around uh, the marble desk, uh, you find uh, mundane writing supplies and extensive, but very uninteresting documents. However, one of the desk drawers is locked. Break it. I don't have any volunteers to open it. <clears throat> yeah, I've got a miracle key in uh, our inventory in the party sheet. <laughs> okay, use it. Oh, it's a manacle key. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't read. Uh, <clears throat> uh, okay. You know, it is... A desk in the administrator's office when you have the administrator on her knees and gagged, you know, she might have a key. Fine, can I go search the administrator's pockets and stuff? <laughs> Shall yeah. I make a will save? Uh, please do. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and after... A uh, little bit of searching, uh, you do find a key on her. Do I find anything else? Uh, not on her. <laughs> But you do find the key to the drawer. Okay, so I take that and use it. Okay, um... You open the drawer and you uncover her journal. And just a quick glance, uh, it looks like her. it's a very concise record of her daily duties and observations. Uh, some of the entries are old, but in the back of the book, uh, you do see entries written in the last year. Uh, what, what, like, what seems of interest if we take a few minutes and look through it? Okay. Um, you find that the majority of it is um, <clears throat> mundane. It, it's notes from staff meetings and interviews with the families of would-be patients. But during some of the entries from the last year, you see the names Hazerton Lowes, And Count Wows um, appearing with increasing regularity. Well, we already hear it in this chapel. And skills. Uh, yes, uh, that name does ring a bell from you, because uh, you remember Winter mentioned that they were here to investigate. Um, the final entries uh, pr pr proved to be of particular interest. And... We have a handout. <laughs> oh boy. Yay. Something different for a change. Um, it, uh, it talks about another unexpected call from the Count. Uh, they have become so common and Lau's focus is so singular that they no longer leave me apprehensive. 
Uh, he requested to see me after his visit with Zandalus, though. He claims to have a theoretical solution for the poor man's condition. Uh, I don't know what the Count and my prized patient have been discussing, and Laos again refused to share. But I doubt that the lordly amateur psycholo psychologist has truly hit upon anything of worth. Regardless, I'd be a fool not to humor my liege. And the next entry, uh, Lau's solution was not at all what I had expected. I have no clue where he turned it up, but on his most recent visit, he, bought, he brought along a copy of Valhida's The Chain of Knights, a near legendary collection of psycho arcane studies and treatments focused on dreaming. While I ab abhor arcane tampering, if there's a permanent solution to Zandalus's nightmares, it could be here. Uh, Laos allowed me to study the text for the duration of his visit, but staunchly refused to leave it in my possession. And then the following day, Laos has made me an offer, his copy of The Chain of Knights. I must do, all I must do in return is accept a handful of new patients, former associates of his that have suffered some unprecedented manner of group amnesia. I might accept this as charity on the Count's behalf, but he insists that I keep no record of their committal. The terms make me suspicious, but I can learn more of these curious strangers once they're in my care. If it means the possibility of a cure for Zandalus and others, I welcome the bargain. And... Wait, can't can't any bets that that's us? <laughs> yes. Uh, the Chain of Knights is a marvel. It will take years of study to unravel all of its possibilities, but I discovered a process by which chronic dreams might be drawn forth and disposed of much like psychic, psychic gristle. Tomorrow our experiment begins. Is that where the journal ends? Yep. Well, clearly everything went to shit, so. Why uh, do you say that? Everything seems fine. As you are looking around the office um, and going through some additional paperwork, um, you do discover a patient record for... Vandalus himself. And, you know, it's not his complete record, but, you know, it does have a few notes about who this gentleman is. You know, he was withdrawn from society, he has an inability to care for the inability to care for himself, uh, he has frequent night terrors resulting in brief but dramatic nocturnal outbursts such as shouting, shaking, a fear response. Um, he grasps the differences between sleep and wakefulness and typically recovers from his nightmares quickly. You know, he's on an antipsychotic regimen, uh, therapy, and observation. <clears throat> um, it talks about his artwork um, and how he will be afforded basic supplies to continue with such art therapy. Uh, then sometime later, <clears throat> um, a shift has occurred in his artwork. Um, he has repeatedly <clears throat> almost perfectly illustrated one of the ancient standing stones situated at the northeast corner of the asylum grounds. 
uh, that area is off limit to patients and there's no way that he should have ever been able to see it. Um, and then it talks about how Count Wiles become interested in first his artwork and then the artist and you know has become a repeat visitor, spent many hours with Zandalus but refuses to explain what his interest in the patient is. And the plot thickens. But apparently the book seemed to have a cure for Vandalus's dreams. And she accepted you all in exchange for the book. And everybody got really quiet. I just got back, so. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Or all of these things around the edge, apparently, presumably done by Zandalus, the charcoal stuff? Uh, you, you find a, a total of six paintings. He said he has almost perfectly illustrated one of the ancient standing stones. Can someone do a detect magic on these paintings? Sure, I detect magic on them. Do I uh, notice anything? No, there's nothing magical at all about the paintings. Um, <clears throat> however, you are uh, detecting magic coming from um, <clears throat> items that are in that drawer you just opened. <laughs> no one do those items appear to be? Uh... Okay, uh, throughout the office, um, you find several things. A uh, brain, a brain-shaped, sculpted wooden box, uh, bookends depicting twin screaming and crying figures, uh, a brass sculpture of an Osirian pyramid, um, Zandalus's paintings. Um, you find several books that are on the bookshelf that may uh, be worth something. Um, and inside the desk drawer, you find a... Okay, you find four potions of antitoxin. Uh, you I'm find... not going to put all of this on the part of the sheet or we need to write this down. Uh, I'm going to put it on the party sheet. Uh, really quick, is anybody interested in the 10-foot poles? Mm, not particularly. Uh, the cleric's vestments? Is that just non-magical clothing? Yeah. We might want to keep one of the poles around, but uh, I might take the vestments and wear them. Would they do me any good? Uh, they're deep purple. So is that like a morale bonus for him? Um, I'm going to drop that down to one, because you'll just really need one. Uh, it may come in handy for disguises. Uh, does anybody one. instead of three? Well, does anyone else want a cleric specimen? There's three of them. It's so purple. Not really. No. Okay. Uh, lab coats. No. Uh, I say keep a couple of them around.
let's say, a uh, lamp, a leather lash. Uh, nope, nope. Let's see, the paradoxical of faithfulness. Palactrophy of faithfulness? Palactrophy, yes, thank you. What exactly uh, can he, it be used uh, for? That is a little box that's attached to... Head on! Uh, applied directly to forehead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, what it does is... Uh, how does it do? It basically... You forget that you think forgot. about what... No, if you're contemplating an action, you're like, is this going to make me fall as a paladin? You can focus and you'll get an idea like, psst, don't do that, idiot. For basically the morality of your action. Uh, right. Uh, you're, you're aware that you're aware of any action or item that could adversely affect your alignment, your standing with your deity. <laughs> Otherwise known as them. Lord Wintermute. Yes. No use for me. Uh, scroll of Cure Light Wounds. Yes. Yeah, anyone can use it. Well, unless somebody... I mean, I could use that. Okay. Um, okay. I mean, I guess we don't really have any wands or anything for anyone else. Okay. Um, I'm, but I was thinking it might be a decent idea to let me take it, because right now we have two other people who can actually cast the spell, and I can't. So, okay. you know, in case they go down, I can use it on them or something. Uh, Do you have an objection to that? No, no, take it. Uh, scroll of Sanctuary. I already have this magic. Can use, can, you can take it to Eric. And the syringe of cure moderate wounds. <laughs> poppy? I believe you can. Yeah, use I think that's a good poppy. <laughs> yeah. Too. Okay, let's pass that out. And. I'm deleting everything else. Okay, let's get to what we found this time round. Okay, uh, you have four antitoxin. You have a candle of spirit protection. Uh, you have one sense, one stick of open thoughts and sense. You have magnifying glasses, uh, you have two doses of opium, uh, two potions of removed paralysis, there's a total of six rare books, one ring of keys, smelling salts, a talisman of lesser healing power, a talisman of lesser warrior's courage, a talisman of greater beneficial winds, uh, two vials of alchemist kindness, two vials of soothe syrup. And it's all in the damn body sheet. <laughs> so has the talisman a single use thing, it looks like? Is that correct? Uh, it's automatically. Looks like it, yeah. Talisman ought to be active all the time. But I don't know about these rules. It says the first time the wearer falls at least five feet, for example, he gets feathers fall, that kind of thing. Uh, a lesser talisman carries only enough energy to protect its wearers once. Uh, after it gets triggered, it crumbles to dust. 
All right. Um, I would also suggest we don't use the Talisman of Lesser Healing Power yet, because it heals for 25 HP as soon as a person goes below half HP. Um, which means it would be insane overkill for anyone right now, including Poppy. Yes. In the middle of the battle, ghost. here, Poppy, put this on. <laughs> it's more like saying at level 3 or 4, when he has more HP, it might be better. At level 2, though, it's just going to be massive overkill. It's like, okay, we wasted half the healing on it, sort of thing. Yeah, I agree with you. That makes sense. Okay. So, does anyone want to withdraw anything from the party sheet? The Ring of Keys, is that... What is the Ring of Keys? Um... Uh, they may work on other doors. Okay. But that was quite a haul, wasn't it? A little richer? <laughs> Not yeah. that we can actually sell this. <laughs> so, anybody want anything from the party sheet? I don't think there's anything I can use right now. Besides, I mean, you already gave me the scroll, time, right? Yeah. So I didn't really see anything more. Uh, I don't even know if I can cast Sanctuary. I don't know if you, why you gave that to me. Uh, yeah, I can't even cast Sanctuary. The Cleric should get that, no probably. Yeah, Is there a way to move it to the party sheet? I can uh, cast Sanctuary. Yeah, I believe you can drag it to... Just drag it to the party sheet. That didn't seem to do anything. Well, there we get it. Okay. And apparently there are two scrolls. Okay, of cure light wounds. Okay, while I vote, does it mean if we checked everything in the room at this point? Uh, yes, that is everything in this room. And it's going up the stairwell. Wait, the stair the stairwell leads up to bookcasing surrounding. So yes, you have checked this entire room. Okay, uh so the how about we go upstairs then? So we're just gonna what? leave this lady spewing smoke? For now. For now. I mean, unless you have a different idea, I might try to find the Xandalus oh. or somebody else who can put her back to oh, normal. Right. We could check okay. the door. I didn't um, know if we had, had decided that was the way we were going with her. Could we try the smelling salts? That's exactly what I was thinking. Uh, it has no effect. All right, upstairs we go. Uh, now, you go upstairs, and it, it's just more to the library. More uh, to the library? Like a separate library? Because the library is way the hell down there. Why do I feel like he's about to open up a gigantic ass room on the map? Uh, we're at C-14. Okay, best I can figure out, this room... <clears throat> Uh, okay, uh, picture it being like, uh, 
That stairwell leads up to a mezzanine that is full of bookcases. Over, it's open into the room. Okay, there's, so there's nothing there's, really there's, upstairs. Uh, uh, you, you go up 20 feet, and there's a walkway all the way around the room that's lined with bookcases. It's going to take a while to search this. Well, uh, you you pretty much already have without looking at every single book. But there is technically not a second floor or map for this room. <laughs> okay. Uh, and you have a door to the south, and you got the administrator still spewing. Okay, I get give out. We keep looking around for now and come back. I mean, I don't think even if we murdered her here, I don't think it would actually help anything immediately, so. Probably safe to assume something is operating through her. Be a possession thing, maybe. Something like that seems likely. Yes. I'll be right. <clears throat> I'll be right back. Hey, Poppy's already running away. Okay. <sighs> The door to the south uh, opens up uh, into a dark and empty hallway. Um, <clears throat> you see the smashed remains of lanterns on the ground, and you can make out... Um, Six doorways in this hallway. You know, I've got a better vision in the dark. I don't know what it's called. Low light vision? Yeah. All right, well, let's send the gnome in first. Who the pin? Show the gnome. Well, I think the unfortunate truth is, I think the gnome technically does have the highest strength in the party at 14, so... I'm sorry. <clears throat> what are we talking about? Gnome tossing. Hey, I'm all for that, and he ain't even here to defend him. <laughs> but there's, um... <clears throat> Broken lanterns in the hallway. Broken lanterns. Yep. Slightly ominous. Wonder if he went to get more clam chowder. Oh. It's dark, the, the cloud is too dark to see. I will cast a light. I should be able to see. What do I see with my low light vision? Actually, I have low light vision too, and a lantern. Uh, you see a dark and empty hallway. Broken lanterns. All right. Send the gnome in first. Okay, Poppy. Uh, you are in a uh, dark hallway, stepping on broken lanterns. There uh -huh. are everything you ever dreamed of. Five doors ahead of you.
Well, I assume that everyone is following me, so... Uh, which door should we go through first? Left. Okay. Top or bottom? Yeah. I'll be right, I'll be right back again. Okay. What'd you say, Leo? The up door. The up one. Top one. Yes. Okay. Good, it's empty. No enemies. Whoa, man. <laughs> okay, uh, you see racks cluttered with boxes and sprawling collections of haphazard junk are filling, are filling this dusty storage room. And you see... Um, image. You see two of these individuals going through stuff in the room. Hey boys, what you doing? Um, I can't see him yet. Looks like a yellow symbol on their forehead. One of them's looking for. Uh, one of them is like just scouring the room, and <clears throat> the other one. One's looking for just whatever kind of valuables he might find. And the other one has, it seems like he is teaching, like he's a teacher, and there's these children's dolls that he's all lined up, and it's like he's tutoring the class. <laughs> and it... You know, it, it's a very surreal encounter. Uh, he is crazy. Uh, you do notice uh, a splotch of yellow on their forehead. Is that in one of the handouts I missed? Something about a splotch that mentioned? Splotches of yellow on the forehead? Uh, no, but... Uh, you did see a reference to the yellow sign. Where did we see that? Uh, that was back, um... That was in the notebook that we got off that one doctor. Right. Did they notice us? Because, uh... Uh, remember, Elric made the joke that, uh, uh, actually, it was from the knowledge religion check on the cult of Hastur. Hastur. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. Did they see us? Uh, yeah, they are very much, uh, aware of you, and when you open the door, you know, they kind of snap to attention and start to come, you know, they are on the defensive. Okay, then I will try the diplomacy. Oh, okay. Uh, um, we don't want to hurt you guys. Back again. 
we only want to talk to you. Yeah, uh, sure, you found two of those guys in this room, uh, and they're now very much aware of you. And you see one picks up a, uh, a crowbar, and the other one is holding a sap in his hand. I think we're getting through to them, guys. And it's time to roll initiative. What? What if we just got <clears throat> through to them? No, you tried. Well, I just rolled crap. They didn't react to, to my speaking uh yeah they they reacted by picking up their weapons aggressively okay yes yes okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's the game then <laughs> okay let's see here um i am of course at the very back I'm going to do like a one and a half move and just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just go to here. Okay. Should have faith myself. I didn't cast on you, Poppy, because he usually gets better without buffs. Yep. <laughs> I'm gonna use that blessing wand when it's my turn. Okay. And let's see. Crowbar is going to come down. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and move up to there, peek through the doorway, and fire at the crowbar guy coming towards us. I do a point blank shot. Sap guy's turn. And he tries to hit Poppy and hits. And five points of non lethal damage to Poppy. There's another road through here to our turfs. Technically, you don't know that yet. <laughs> okay. No watch yet. But there's another door. <laughs> there's another door? Yeah, right. Holy shit. Damn. <laughs> what is it about a critical hit? How is it that how how is it even possible for Earthbreaker to only be at plus four at level two? It's a serious question. Um, because I mean, minimum you have two BAB, you have two strength, and you're small. So that's like five minimum. 
because because I have to manually move, uh, upgrade my base attack bonus when I level uh, up, and I keep forgetting to do that. Gotcha. In the chat window, Jess. Okay, and let's see. Turn. And Elric, you're up. With everybody in the way, there ain't much I can do except use that wand. So, uh, I'll bless everybody. Good. I do like Fantasy Grounds and the effects. It's the hell out of pen and paper. Yes. I gotta say, I've, I've been playing Roll20 for the last couple of years, and this is a lot nicer. I yeah. Yes. I mean, so, yeah. It's work. Yeah, Roll20, I've played a few games on Roll20 when I couldn't find games for Fantasy Grounds at the times I wanted, and I'm like, yeah, I prefer Fantasy Grounds so much more. The Roll20's only... got some pretty cool stuff, too. There's some cool yes. things like dynamic lighting, and some aspects of the character yes. sheet is better. Um, there's some nice things like that. Sure, but on the flip side, you have issues like, as far as I'm aware, there's like apparently no way to pop up images, or at least the DMs I was running with never popped up images to show you like what you were seeing or anything. It's just maps only. Yeah, the effects and automatic rolls and everything else is better. It's and you can actually like seem to target things better without needing to find crazy macros or whatever. Exactly. That's the big thing is you gotta really like writing macros for that game. <laughs> yes. If I will program anything, I will charge for it. By the way, you're up, Steph. Oh, okay. Uh, and I can see these doors behind me. Yes. Okay. In that case, I will move one. Two, three. These uh, bookcases or whatever, are they ceiling high or are they uh, just like uh, uh, high? Or? Uh, yeah, they're, they're tall. You can't, you can lob something over it, but you couldn't like shoot a bow. Could you push one over on um, Sap? Uh, uh, maybe if you had the strength. No, that I don't think that'd be the alchemist's first move. One, two, three, four, five. And then we we'll go to here, six. That's the uh, end of my move, and then I'm gonna use the uh, 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 this guy. Oh. I'm going to shoot my bow with him. Nope. I'm going to miss with my bow at him. <laughs> that kind of sucked. Just a little. Can I hit them? Uh, not without moving into the room. But can I go through, uh, through pop? Like this? Uh, yeah, but that's gonna trigger attacks. Because you're moving into threatened areas. Okay. Mm. Now, you did just see Sith go through a different door. Through here? Yep. You but can you do a can... double move and just not attack this round. 
Uh, can can I use a regular move? Can I use the regular move to be here and use a, a spell? Uh, yeah, what's your move? Uh... I use the resistance on myself. How far can I reach? Here? Here? Uh, what's your move? Do what? Uh, do 20 feet. Yes, I'm walking 20 feet. Uh, I'd would, I would you. I'd let you go there on a single move. Okay, okay. Okay. That's it. Okay. Mr. Crowbar is going to come down and try to hit Poppy and misses. I'm back in two minutes. Okay. Going to go ahead and do a full withdraw. You go ahead and stop there. Now that's an interesting tactic. I'm actually going to withdraw into the area of combat. <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that he went, like... Yeah, through the other door. <laughs> Oh, and, you know, you hit this one. Come on, baby. Oh, and it's a hit. Nope. Slapped you with the sap again. God, that sounded dirty. Lord, my sap all over you. You're up, Alric. Well, how far can I move? Uh, you can move uh, 20 feet or four squares. On a single move, if you do a double move, you can move eight squares. But you can't do anything else. Right. Perfect. I'll move. And I wonder what our alchemist is going to do this time. What is he going to do? He's going to... Well, is the crowbar dude considered in combat? Both of them are. They're both engaged with Poppy, I yeah, assume. That's what right? I thought. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, in that case, I will just you know, try to shoot him with a with an arrow. Nope. And uh, I'm going to miss again. Because that's how I roll. Crap. Can I... How far can I go? Can I reach them? Uh, you can go four squares on a move. Like here? Yeah. Close as you can get. Okay, then. And then uh, there's nothing else I can do. Let me see. How much non-lethal damage do you have to do to knock somebody out? Their hit points. I'd really like to knock the gnome out. <laughs> <coughs> There's Sorry. nothing else I can do. That's okay. it. So I can use double movement. And that's it. And swung the crowbar at Poppy and missed. Eric, you are up. I'm going to take a five foot step there. And Sap is heavily wounded, so I'll go and cheat at him. That will do it. Good, oh. good. <laughs> do I have to do everything around here? Nice. Take that, Sap. Insane loser. You have flanking. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have flanking? Yes. Cool. Probably. Rolls minimum damage. According to some numbers I checked, uh, that wouldn't be as big of a deal if you had more than plus three damage. Sorry, what? It wouldn't be as big of a deal if you had more than a two strength modifier. Nah. You're up, Elric. I'm going to move uh, one, two, three, four. And do I get a shot with a crossbow? Yeah, if you want. And you're shooting at Crowbar, right? Yes, I am. I'm sorry. I meant to target. And that missed. Okay, Crowbar is going to take it in the short. Well, I'm going to move first. 
Now Crowbar is going to take it in the computer. Or not. Not. Man, the alchemist sucks. Leo didn't waste any time. <laughs> Fancy not. That's it. Well, you got Mr. Crowbar's attention. And he missed. Let him try. And I'm going to go ahead and remove SAP off the uh, combat tracker. Uh, okay, I'd like to try to keep him alive if we can, probably, but... <laughs> I will uh, leave Mr. Crowbar on there if you wish to interrogate. All life is precious. <laughs> Harry Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that was funny. <laughs> life is precious rolls at ten. So, oh, anyway, uh, Mr. Crowbar kind of just collapses on the ground. <laughs> I mean, he's dying, but he's not dead. You can stabilize him if you wish. I use stabilize. To be honest, I wasn't really expecting to hit him at all. <laughs> okay. Um, we'll consider you all out of combat, and he is stable. You have two stable apostles, if you so desire. Yay. Uh, what's your name? What the fuck are you doing here? I start to ask them. My friend's had a bad day. Could you tell us who you are? <laughs> uh, we're, we're John and Paul. <laughs> well, what are you doing here? Are you one of the former inmates? Uh, we, we serve Zandalus. Well, How long have you been serving Zandalus? <clears throat> Since the beginning. Since the beginning of what? Of the takeover. Okay, and when was that? Two days ago. Where were you? We were unconscious at the time. We woke up and things have been kind of crazy here. We're trying to figure out who's what, what's going on, who we are even. Apparently we were patients here too, but we kind of don't remember. Seems we have something in common with some of you. Why exactly you are answering his questions? He should answer our questions. Why hey you guys, attack I us? To, I have to jump off. So, I got All to right. Good. See you next week, bud. But thank you, though. Yeah, thank I you enjoyed that. it. Are we stopping here? No. Oh, okay.
user disconnected from your channel. Okay, then I will ask you, do you know where your leader is? Why'd you attack us? Uh, we were sent here to, uh, <clears throat> uh, where are they sent there? Uh, we were sent here to destroy records. <laughs> uh, what records concern you so? Uh, anything mentioning Zandalus's name. Ah. The handout earlier, can I hold that up and say, you guys uh, were looking kind of in the wrong place? And, you know, Mr. Uh, Crowbar... Mr. Crowbar is talking. The other one who Mr. Sap with that was tutoring the dolls and so forth. Uh, between the two, he's the one that's kind of like just that shit crazy. Er? <laughs> I'm like, are oh, they both that shit crazy? <laughs> Uh, we must destroy that, and uh, he's like, there are many places that they store records in this asylum. Why does Andalus want it destroyed? Ask Andalus. Where is he? We might. Uh, he is in... what they called it uh, he is in I'm looking it up. He's in the Rund Tower. Where is that from here? That is located... File a map again. That's on the uh, north. Is that the, okay. it? It's in the north. Um. I'm trying to figure out how they got there on the map. <laughs> I got a map and I got a number, but I don't have what section. It is in the northwest corner of the asylum. Ah, so how did you meet Zandalus? From what we've read, he seems like an interesting fellow, you know. Uh, he was here when we were here. <laughs> Makes sense. Apparently he's a good artist too. Have you seen any of his drawings? Yes, he's a fantastic artist. And Mr. Sap is just, you know, he's just like babbling... He sent us here to destroy records, and that was it. Anything uh, with his name. I'm 
Why were you here in the first place? Do you remember? <laughs> they said I was crazy. <laughs> imagine that. I can't imagine. You seem like a fine and upstanding person. Who could do such a thing? I don't know. <laughs> Did you destroy all records? That's what they uh, seem to be saying. Uh, we, we had, uh, there were more of us. We had finished this room and, well, I decided to look for valuables. <laughs> and, well, he, uh, <laughs> he just played with the dolls. <laughs> what was he trying to teach the dolls? I don't know, that dude crazy. <laughs> is, he, is the other guy answering about why he was teaching the dolls? Yeah, he's just sitting there just babbling incoherently, you know. He's, <laughs> he's just all excited that, you know, there's people and... <laughs> Needless to say, you're keeping a watchful eye on him. What do you mean? This sounds like a fine and upstanding citizen. <laughs> I mean, I assume that they're like tied up in ropes at this point or something, because I brought rope. Okay, they're now tied up in rope. <laughs> I mean, I don't think we just revived him saying, hey guys, this sounds cool, right? <laughs> no one said. <laughs> Really, uh, you think that's probably about as much information as they're going to convey or that they would know. They were just two insane inmates that were sent whoa, whoa, whoa. on Who are you a calling simple insane? task. These guys are not insane, sir. They're the most lucid people I've met yet. What do you guys want to do with them? Q? Take us to Xandalus. <laughs> uh... They won't do that. Why won't you? Um, they don't say. Can I do a sense of motive to try to get a feel for what they might be not wanting to say from their mannerisms? Besides that, they're crazy. Um. No, not really. Um, out of character, they're not going to take you to Zandalus. <laughs> okay, I, I will use Detect Magic to see if there is any magic effect over them. Uh, no, you're not detecting. Um, Okay. You're you're not detecting any aura coming from them, or like a spell's been cast on them. Uh, however, uh, Mister Crowbar's uh, <clears throat> bag, uh, you are detecting some magic coming from it. Can we take a look and see what's there? Yes. Are you asking me or Mr. Crowbar? I'm asking you. I don't care what he thinks. <laughs> yes, you <laughs> sure can. Uh, inside of it, you find uh, two vials of silver sheen and an oil of a line weapon. And I'm going to drag that over to the party sheet. And 
And uh, that's <clears throat> the only other magic that you detect in the room. What is the oil of a line weapon? Makes a weapon aligned so you can make it good, for example, to, to bypass some de demonic or devilish damage reductions. Alright, thanks. <clears throat> okay, so what do you want to do with these two guys? Turn him into the captain. I mean, I'm honestly not sure he really wants the responsibility or to deal with taking care of these insane people right now. Yeah, I believe so. We should kill them. Yeah, because <clears throat> if you remember, uh, <clears throat> Winter talked about the apostles trying to take over the other part of the asylum. Yes. So uh, you're not really surprised to encounter these guys at all. Hey, don't tell me what my character's surprised by. Fine, roll the dice. <laughs> so, what do you want to do with them? Tie them up, leave them, come back for them. What do other people want to do? Well, if they're not uh, going to attack us, I don't have any problem with leaving them be. I, oh, I mean, they, they did attack us. <laughs> yes, I believe they are a threat, and if you let them leave, they will come back. The problem here is that normally you might argue some like, recommit them to the asylum, or take him to a proper legal authority to do stuff, right? But that doesn't really exist in this context, is the thing. Uh, if we could do that, but we can. We can't. Uh, you all could always find a way to bar the door. Um, or just leave him tied up and hope for the best. It's the hope for the best part that I'm not so thrilled with the, about the idea of. Me too. If we spare our enemies, we'll be backstabbing. Sooner or later. Okay, let's take a vote. <laughs> now, if you guys want to kill them, by all means, go for it. But I feel like the participating would probably break character for me. So, well, well, same boat. I'm neutral good, so I can't really just kill a disabled prisoner. Well, I mean, legally, they deserve to be executed for trying to take over the whole prison. The only, the, basically, the only thing, I'm neutral good as well, but the only thing that's making me even ponder is the fact that they clearly seem kind of insane. So the question is, can they be cured and fixed and, you know, brought back to society as something worthwhile? Or are they basically beyond hope, in which case we should just kill them? I'm neutral chaotic, but uh, so I don't believe then they can be used, they can be a lie. So they are enemy, they are threat to me. Yeah. Kill them. Okay, everybody that doesn't want to kill them out in the hall. <laughs> Shut the door, don't ask any questions. <laughs> So, shall we just assume they're tied up, unless you two guys want to kill them? Did we... 
I mean, where, where were the records of the inmates that we had? Is there any way to figure out what these two guys were put in for in the first place? Whether it was something that seems like could be... I mean, if they're just, like, complete psychos who got locked away, well, fine, but if they had, like, problems that were legitimately being addressed, that's another. Uh, you have a... Yeah, your intuition tells you that they're probably complete psychos. Okay, let's just kill them then. Okay. I will... Oops! I dropped my mace on their head. <sighs> Party gets a short rest. That's a good idea. One take five. Uh, actually, uh, let's uh run one more room and then we'll just call it a night if it's all right. All right. Okay. Okay. Sure. Okay. Uh. Also. Better for the time being. Choose one, Malpok. Choose other. This one. Okay. Um, actually, uh, can you guys go back into the hallway? Okay. Um. Okay. Poppy. Steph is not in the room. Uh, Poppy and Elric, um, <clears throat> you hear a faint dripping sound coming from the door at the end of the hallway. It's just real faint, but you do notice it. Sorry, I didn't get it. Uh, do you mean what kind of sound? Uh, uh, they, they hear a faint dripping sound. Okay. And you guys hear that? <laughs> as you move closer to the door, um, I need y'all to make a perception check. Poppy and Elric. Do I find that? Uh, it's on your character sheet and on your skills tab. Sorry, I clicked twice. Okay, um... Poppy, uh, you noticed, um, <clears throat> it's a wooden door, and you notice little beads of blood coming from between some of the door's boards. I'm standing Oops, I'm ominous. standing behind Elric who is right on top of the door and he doesn't notice this. <laughs> fucking, fucking fucking dice rolls, man, I swear. Hey, hey, yeah, not 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 with his dice roll. He uh he's looking at you know, he's examining the hinges and 
what fine wood they used, but he's missing the little beads of blood. <clears throat> and I need everyone to make a reflex save. Oh, God. And Jess, that's on the uh, main tab of your character sheet. Bottom right hand corner. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> This is gonna suck. It's a... The doors... kind of... burst open. And this wave... of bloody gore... Um, at the scene in The Shining where the blood comes gushing down the hallway. Exactly what I was thinking of. <laughs> uh, everybody gets knocked back 20 feet is prone. Holy fuck! <laughs> and takes three points of damage. <laughs> well, that was fun. And let's see. Beth, I'm actually going to let him be out of the room. <laughs> and gentlemen... That is a uh, great stopping point for the night. Okay, I think I got blood on cool. my, my <laughs> robe here. <laughs> you guys have red on you. But, yeah, yes, uh, all of you, you all are, uh, I need to go ahead and put addition on you, or I forget it for next week. Okay. And, but everybody is knocked flat. You are covered in blood. Uh, it is seeping through the door cracks and everything else. Just anywhere it can find an escape, it is escaping from the room. Or from the hallway. But, yeah, mm. you all are just... Nasty motherfuckers. <laughs> okay. Nice touch to end of the game. You guys need a bath. <laughs> All of you need a bath except for Sith. <laughs> I'm gonna spam mending on myself for a bit and clean up all the blood. Yes. Nice touch. <laughs> Alright guys, as I said, that's a uh, great stopping point. And um, we will see you all next week. All right. All right. Thank you all again next week. All righty. All right. Thanks, guys. See you.